Hi guys. Today I am out on a walk at Diamond Valley Lake because it's the super bloom and I just thought it is just so beautiful out here and I don't have my husband and my kid with me so I'm just gonna do it now and I might be pausing a lot because this is a public place and it's uh, a little awkward to film out in public. Okay they're gone. I'm on a, a little bit less crowded trail um, so there aren't as many people passing by so I thought it'd be an okay spot to film. So today I am going to talk to you about how to start your art business from scratch. So this is for the person that just decided, you know what, I would love to make a living from my art. Um, but what do I do? How do I do that? Where do I start? Uh, that, this is for you. Um, and if you've been doing your little art business for a while, that's okay. You can still watch this video. You might pick up a thing or two. Um, I just full disclosure I'm not necessarily like some sort of big shot art business person um, but I have been at this for a while and picking up little by little so I thought you know what I'm just gonna help you out I'm gonna save you years of figuring out piece by piece what to do and you can just get started from my knowledge so where do you start well here you go step number one you're going to create an email for your business yes uh, if you don't already have an email for your business I recommend making one um, like don't use the email that you made when you were 12 that was like rock cruncher 123 like don't do that make a business email using your birth name or if your birth if you are not using your birth name as like your business name then you know obviously make a email using your business name as the email um, so like for example my maiden name is Allison Cedar, so I made an email, allisoncedar at gmail.com. That is my business email. So that's where you're going to start. That's step number one. You're also going to create a separate email if you plan to have a YouTube channel. Um, you know, this is to prevent getting hacked. Um, a lot of people are recommending now having a email that is dedicated just for YouTube that you do not have publicized anywhere. Only you and YouTube know about it. So uh, if you plan to have a YouTube channel, channel at all in the future, then create a separate email just for YouTube. Step number two is get a business phone number. Now you might be saying, Allison, I don't want to have to uh, pay for another phone line. I Like that doesn't make any sense to me. Well, guess what? You're not going to have to. You are going to go on Google you, uh, through your business email and you are going to create a Google Voice number. It is free and you can pick a an area code that is near your uh, home or, or wherever you're conducting business um, and then you have a completely different phone number just for your business. Uh, it took me up until like just a few weeks ago to figure out that I could do that. Um, so I'm saving you years of just being like, nah, I don't want to publicize my phone number. And you know what? Just get a Google Voice number. And then with that phone number, you are going to create a WhatsApp business account. And I know cars could be on this road. Anyways, you're going to take that Google Voice number and you are going to make a WhatsApp business account. And you're going to connect that Google Voice number to the WhatsApp business account. You, you can use that so that people internationally can contact you through WhatsApp. Now, both of these are free. It will also help you to maintain, you know, your privacy and then you're not publicizing your personal information. But it will still enable people to be able to contact you. Step number three is to open a bank account. Now. Don't go to Chase or Wells Fargo or whatever and open a bank account there. You are going to go online and you are going to search for no maintenance fee bank account. Now, personally, I use Capital One. What I like about them is that there's no minimum to open a bank account. So you can open it with zero dollars in your account. And they don't have, like I said, they don't have any maintenance fees. So if you don't have any money coming in because, you know, you just started your business, then they're not going to hit you with a $25 fee just for having your account open. There are a lot of options out there. So I would recommend, like I said, Google, do a little research and figure out what would be best for you. But I've been using the Capital One, so I can recommend that one. You do not have to open a business bank account, just so you understand. When you are just starting your business, you're probably going to be what's called a sole proprietor, which means you didn't file any sort of paperwork to start your business. You're just operating under your name. Later on down the line, if you need to open a business bank account, you can always do that and then switch over everything to a business bank account. The reason that you're going to open a bank account now for your business is because you want to get in the habit of keeping your personal finances separate from your business finances. So anytime you use your money that you earn from a day job to 
um, do something in your business, you are going to transfer that money over to the bank account that you're using for your business. And then you're going to pay for it from that bank account or use that bank account to pay for a credit card that you're using for business expenses. So that this is an account that you're using for any business transaction. Number four, this is optional. Open a credit card. If you have established credit, um, then and you feel comfortable using a credit card, then you can go ahead and apply for a credit card. Um, and you can apply for business credit cards in this situation. You don't necessarily have to have a business that's already up and running to get a business credit card. What qualifies as a business is very loose when it comes to credit cards. You as a sole proprietor starting a business, that qualifies for a business credit card. So this is just a way that you can start to like establish credit for your business. You can use this bank account to basically finance things that you wouldn't necessarily have money for upfront. You need to purchase inventory. It's useful to have. There are business credit cards from plenty of different credit card companies that don't have any annual fees. So I'm going to leave some links for those down below. Number five, you are going to make a PayPal business account. A feature that I started using finally was setting up a tip jar. There is a section on PayPal where you can make a page for donations and you would just call that tip jar. It just gives people the ability to be able to support your work if they like what you're doing. If you don't really have a whole lot for sale yet or you don't have other avenues to generate income just yet then you can set that up and put that link in places that we're going to discuss in just a minute speaking of if you like what i'm doing here i will link my tip jar appreciate the support Next up, you are going to buy your domain. This is pretty much the only thing that I recommend spending money on at this point. If you have a pretty good idea of what your business name is going to be, then you can just go ahead and buy your domain name, whether that's your legal name or maybe you created a moniker because your name is very common or your name is hard to spell, then I would just go ahead and buy your domain name. Not necessarily setting up your website yet, but that way you at least lock that down. Nobody else can take it from you before you take it, especially if it's a moniker domain names are really not that expensive they're like $12.50 a year for a .com domain name I went to Google domains you can go through your your brand spanking new business email account and um, just you buy it that's it and then you've locked that down for a whole year for $12.50 even if you are a broke teenager I'm, I'm pretty sure you could scrounge up $12.50 so uh, yeah I would recommend doing that or maybe it's just $12 I can't remember I'll put that on the screen. Um, it might just be a flat $12. Again, this does not mean that we are necessarily setting up our website yet. You're just buying the domain name so that people can't take it before you set up your website. Step number seven. Now you are going to open all your social media accounts. Yay! You wanna do this as soon as possible to prevent your desired username from being taken. Create an account for pretty much any social media site that you can think of. That would be YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Pinterest. I finally just made a Reddit account the other day. I didn't think I would ever need a Reddit. Uh, try to keep your personal stuff as separate as you can from your business stuff. Create business accounts for uh, everything. Step number eight, you are going to set up your online shop. Personally, for this, I recommend using an Etsy when you're just starting out. You probably have seen a lot of videos of like why I quit Etsy and moved to Shopify or Squarespace and set up my own thing. I don't recommend doing that just yet. Shopify and Squarespace are pretty expensive, especially for a beginner that has absolutely no following and hasn't even started making products yet or anything like that to sell. I don't recommend setting up a Squarespace or Shopify just yet. I would stick with Etsy. They don't charge you anything to just open up a shop they charge you like 20 something cents per listing and then whenever you sell something they do a, a transaction fee which yes it's high but when you're just starting out it's going to be a lot more cost effective in the beginning than setting up your own website now when you start making enough money from your etsy shop that you really start to see the effect of the, those transaction fees then yeah go ahead and consider switching over to making your own store but you know for the time being just just stick with etsy step number nine is set up your newsletter it doesn't matter if you plan to ever have a newsletter it doesn't matter if you have any idea what you're going to have a newsletter about just go ahead and get an account with some sort of newsletter um company there are lots of them like mailchimp mailer light i currently found send in blue which i think seems like a good service just go ahead and just set one up and then you'll have links to it in case anybody wants to sign up for your newsletter for whatever reason you're not going to have anybody subscribe to it at the very beginning anyways so just don't worry about it just do it just do it because i said so
your last step step number 10 is to set up some sort of link tree again lots of different services for this one that you can use just go ahead and sign up with one you can kind of sign up with the classic link tree i eventually moved over to card that's c-a-r-r-d and then you already have all your social media profiles you know you can put a link to the ones that you think that are going to be your main social media outlets you can link to your online shop you can link to your tip jar anything that you're excited about link to your email newsletter for people to sign up this is where it all comes together honestly it, it took me years to piece all this together and then i was just thinking the other day you know what this could save somebody a lot of time um so if you do this i hope that it helps you out to save you like months if not years worth of time figuring out where to start so most of this stuff you could probably do within a day if one thing takes longer to complete than the other just move on to the next thing and keep it going i created a free printable uh, checklist of these 10 steps so if you would like to have that free printable checklist you can go ahead and sign up for my email newsletter to get that checklist but yeah now that you've got the basic stuff set up you're rocking and ready to go uh just start posting don't overthink it like it's probably going to be bad i'm not going to lie it's probably going to be terrible but you know it, the hardest part is just starting so just start the more you post the better you'll get so just get started i wish you the best in this artistic journey and your business endeavors uh, in the meantime, don't quit your daydream, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Hello, dude. Oh, this one. That's number two. It's fine. I'm not mad. This is a public place. It's my fault for filming here. Anyways. Thank God it's over because like, it's getting hot and it is so bright out here. All right. I'm going home.